This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Cattle, the giant Chinese battery maker, just took a major step forward in developing a new type of lower cost battery for EVs. It filed for a patent on its next generation sodium ion battery. Sodium is more abundant and easier to get than lithium. Cattle first revealed its development work on the sodium battery last July. A key feature is that Cattle eliminated the anode to improve the energy density. It's currently rated at 160 kilowatt hours per kilogram, but Cattle says it will come to market with 200 kilowatt hours per kilogram. That's not as energy dense as lithium ion batteries, but it can charge to 80% in 15 minutes, retains 90% of its capacity at minus 20 degrees Celsius, and it's far less likely to catch fire. Cattle says the battery is suitable for EVs and for energy storage. The European Union plans to reduce CO2 emissions from cars by 55% by 2030. But now a Dutch lawmaker wants that ramped up to 75%. Others say that's not possible and even argue that it would be hard for Europe to eliminate ICEs by 2035. Climate change is a major topic in Europe, and if automakers face a more aggressive timetable to phase out internal combustion engines, it's going to wreak havoc on their current plans. If people don't know where they can charge an EV, they're never going to buy one. So BMW is teaming up with a company that has a unique solution for expanding charging points. A good portion of chargers need an app or RFID card and internet connection for the customer to start using it. But HeyCharge developed a system that doesn't need the internet. It uses Bluetooth to communicate between an app on the user's phone and the charger. This means that plugs could be installed in places like apartments or underground garages where it might have been difficult and or costly to put in a charger that needs an internet connection. In fact, HeyCharge claims that its entire system can reduce costs by as much as 80%. BMW announced it's making an investment in HeyCharge, but didn't reveal the amount. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Looks like delivering pizzas autonomously is a good business. Neuro just introduced its third generation electric and autonomous delivery vehicle. It looks similar to its previous delivery pods, and like those, the new one doesn't hold any occupants. It's only designed to deliver goods. Domino Pizza made these pods famous by using them in television ads. But the new pod can hold up to 24 bags of groceries and carry nearly 500 pounds. And the compartments are heated and cooled and can handle temperatures between 22 degrees Fahrenheit and 116 degrees Fahrenheit. The vehicle is 20% smaller in width than your average passenger car and has a top speed of 45 miles an hour. In the event of a collision with a pedestrian, it's equipped with an external airbag at the front to reduce the impact. Neuro is building pre-production models now and partnered with BYD North America to build hardware components for vehicle platforms at BYD's manufacturing plant in California. Neuro is also planning to open its own manufacturing and test facility in southern Nevada to build the delivery vehicle. Speaking of new manufacturing plants, here's one that's got us scratching our heads. EV startup Lucid says it wants to open a plant in Saudi Arabia. Lucid's chairman, Andrew Liveris, said they're negotiating with the Saudi Public Investment Fund, which is Lucid's largest shareholder to open an EV factory in the country in 2025 or 2026. Well, when your largest shareholder comes up with an idea, you've clearly got to pay attention. Saudi Arabia has a big aluminum smelting plant, but the logistics cost of making cars could be horrific. So let's see what happens. And you might remember that in 2014, Jaguar announced plans to build a plant in the kingdom, but then it quietly scrapped those plans a year later. If you caught our coverage of CES, you might have seen that the supplier ZF held a virtual hackathon for the very first time. It was all about bringing in programmers from outside of the company to develop new functions and features driven by open source automotive software. 
It was able to get 80 participants from 12 countries who had 48 hours to come up with a solution for one of four categories. And the winning team had the idea to use all the data from a smart city to route emergency vehicles as quickly as possible through the streets. It says almost all of the hardware is already in place for this, just not the control systems. ZF will now work with the winning team, which got a $10,000 prize, to further develop the idea. We're going to have a great debate on AutoLine After Hours this afternoon. What's the best way to sell cars? With traditional franchise dealers or by selling cars directly to consumers from the factory like all the EV startups are doing? We'll have Tim Jackson from the Colorado Car Dealers Association as our special guest, and Alexa St. John of Business Insider will also be with us. So join John and Gary when they get the show going at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. China now has the largest car park in the world. According to China's Ministry of Public Security, there are 395 million vehicles registered in China. That's over 100 million more than in the United States. About 302 million of those vehicles in China are automobiles. And it just makes you wonder how big that car park could actually become. China has four times the population of the United States, so conceivably, it could grow to about a billion vehicles over time. And we're just a few months away from learning whether or not Audi will get into Formula One. Reuters reports that Audi's supervisory board will make a decision at the end of this quarter or in early April. The decision hinges on whether Formula One adopts a new rule in 2026 that would require the engines in the racing series to run on synthetic fuel. With synthetic fuel, those engines would admit almost zero greenhouse gas emissions. Most automakers believe that synthetic fuels will not achieve the scale or price that's needed to compete with electric vehicles. But synthetic fuels could be perfect for aircraft and large ships and for racing cars. German tech company Siemens is launching a new in-house startup called Simulitic that will use simulations to study the impact and safety of autonomous driving. That information will be provided to insurance companies that are interested in getting into the autonomous vehicle insurance market. Simulitic will use digital twins to create a digital replica of the environment the autonomous vehicle will operate in. So insurance companies will have a better idea of how to create policies around AVs. Japan's minivans are so much cooler than ours. Check out the new Noah and Voxy from Toyota that go on sale in the country today. Say what you want about the bold styling and massive grills, at least these minivans have some real character. And still, like any minivan, they're super versatile. There's the option for three rows of seating, power sliding doors, remote parking, and even four-wheel drive. Pricing ranges from a little more than $23,000 up to about $34,000. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be right back here again tomorrow. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.